Civilian volunteers are heading for a town north of Baghdad to join the Iraqi army in its stand against the advancing Islamic army of ISIS. The fundamentalist Sunni rebels are fighting to set up a religious state in the Middle East. Both Iran and the United States are offering to help the Iraqi government. Well, thousands of people have been forced to flee their homes in parts of Iraq overtaken by ISIS militants. So far, the rebels have stalled north of Baghdad, but people there are still bracing for a possible attack. Our next guest has family in Baghdad. Mohammed al-Maliki is an uh, Iraqi Canadian. He lives in Winnipeg, and he joins us right now over the phone. Oh, oh actually, he joins us live. So, Mohammed, what is your family telling you about the situation in Baghdad? Hi, thank you. Uh, my family back home, I've been connecting with them uh, almost on a regular basis, and they've been saying that the issue in Baghdad has been progressing literally minute by minute. Uh, Baghdad has literally turned into a ghost town right now. People are bracing for the worst. Uh, those who could escape have escaped uh, to Iran and neighboring countries. Uh, other people have been arming themselves, preparing themselves uh, for what's to be a very big crisis. At what point do you think your family will decide whether they should leave? Well, I've spoken about this with my family back home and about possibly escaping the country. Uh, and my uncle has said, listen, my parents are old and, you know, frail. Uh, my grandfather has recently been diagnosed with cancer, uh, so he can't really escape. And he's just told me, listen, we have a 50% chance uh, of living or dying whether we leave or we stay in this country. So we may as well uh, just stay put in a country that we're familiar with and just take our chances here. And this is not unique to just my family. It's something that people across the country are going through right now. Yeah, that's got to be a tough question to deal with. Mohammed, many are blaming this current conflict on sectarian violence, the Sunnis against the Shias, but there are many other issues at play here. How do you explain to people here in Canada what's going on in your home country? What I try to explain to people in Canada uh, about this situation is that it's not a Sunni versus Shia situation. Uh, Sunnis and Shias, uh, you know, respect one another. Uh, Islam in general does not, uh, you know, condemns any form of violence. What this is, uh, is uh, a very political situation. ISIS didn't just come out of the blue. Uh, this was the former Saddam Hussein's uh, Ba'athi party uh, that has been preparing and arming themselves uh, for a very long time and waiting for the opportune time to strike. And that time happened to be when the United States uh, um, left the country. You know, watching your home country go through this, how do you feel watching the pictures that we're seeing and knowing what your family's going through? Uh, I feel a sense of guilt, I think, because, uh, you know, I, I see my, you know, my family back home and everyone back home, uh, you know, bracing for the worst right now. And I know that, you know, in a country like Iraq, the people haven't been living for a very long time. What they've been doing is simply surviving day to day with all the situations, uh, with all the crisis that's going on. Whereas I'm living in a place I'm so fortunate to live in. Uh, whereas in Canada, you know, I wake up in the morning, I know I have a job to go to, I know my security is in jeopardy. Uh, I know there's a chance, there's a very strong chance I can go, come home uh, alive, whereas people back home don't have that peace of mind. They've simply been living minute, uh, surviving minute to minute. Mm -hmm. Mohammed, President Obama says the U.S. will not be sending troops to Iraq, but he will be monitoring the conflict closely. What kind of action do you think the U.S. should be taking? From a, as a Canadian, as someone who understands the dynamic, uh, you know, foreign policy in America, I understand why President Obama wouldn't want to necessarily send troops on the ground, uh, and I don't think that's and that's not what the Iraqi government has been calling for, nor uh, the Iraqi people at all. This is still a situation that the Iraqi people and the government think they can control, uh, but only with the support of uh, the United States uh, and the West, and this support that. You know, the Iraqi government has been calling for support from the United States in the form of uh, drones, in the form of intelligence, in the form of um, aircrafts, uh, you know, that sort of stuff. They haven't been asking for troops on the ground. Mohammed, I'm running out of time, but I just want to ask you quickly, from your perspective, uh, what do you think it'll take to bring an end to this conflict? What needs to happen is, I think, uh, Iraq as a country has to understand that uh, the conflict between Sunnis and Shias and other minorities has to end. In order for Iraq to be a successful country, 
all cultures, all religions, uh, all people need to share in the future and they need to uh, embrace one another and move towards a common goal and they need to put aside this, uh, um, this petty fight over religion and context of that sort. Mohammed, I want to thank you so much for taking the time thank to speak you. with us. We really appreciate, appreciate thank it. Thank you very much. That's Mohammed Al Malaki. He's an Iraqi Canadian with family living in Baghdad, and he was speaking to us from Winnipeg.